Hi, it's Steph, and we're at the Home Depot, and they have a bunch of new perennials and shrubs. So let's go ahead and take a look at the late June inventory at the Home Depot. Yarrow or Achillea. This is actually a plant that I'm on the lookout for because I lost mine over the winter. It was in a bed that stays too moist and yarrow does not like too much moisture in the soil. So you need a well-draining soil in full sun. This variety here is called Millie Rock Yellow Terracotta and it starts off this really soft buttery yellow and then it will get terracotta coloring around the outer edges of the petals. Now what's really pretty about Yarrow or Achillea is that it does go through several color variations. So you look like you have multiple colors on one plant. Now this variety, the Millie Rock Yellow Terracotta, looks like it gets to be 10 to 12 inches in height and it needs 14 to 16 inch spacing and it does say prefers well-drained soil and full sun and blooms later spring through fall. And some Gara, a plant that looks really beautiful and so whimsical in the garden, the way that these tall bloom spikes just kind of sway in the wind. Now this is another one that does like a well-draining soil in full sun. It actually prefers sandy soil. So if you have a really dry, infertile, sandy soil, Gara would probably do really well for you. Now this is hardy in zones, let's see, I think it's only hardy down to a zone five or so, um, maybe even a six, down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. This variety is called Gara Beliza White. It is a perennial for full sun. It gets to be 10 to 16 inches in height. It needs 16 to 20 inch spacing and it blooms early summer through fall. This is another one that looks really beautiful paired with say um, a salvia or even a lavender, which likes similar conditions, a drier, well-draining soil in full sun. And these are in the Home Depot house containers for $9.98. Now here is a plant that you should be careful about adding to your garden. It looks really pretty, but the obedient plant may not always be obedient. It has a tendency to seed itself and spread itself around. So this one here is called the Obedium Plant Autumn Carnival, and it looks like it will have a pink bloom. It likes full sun. It gets to be 15 to 17 inches in height and hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and it blooms late summer through fall. Now, the great thing about coming to garden centers at different parts of the season is that they will continually get plants throughout the growing season. So you can keep adding things to your garden um, that are on sale at that particular point so that you have flowers blooming all season long. And tick seed or Coreopsis, another plant that is looking so pretty alongside salvia. Now this variety here looks like it has a double roughly petal. There are some Coreopsis or tick seed that have single petals. This one looks like it has almost like a, a double. Look at that. And this variety is called tick seed presto. And it is a perennial for full sun. It is deer resistant. It has a clumping form. And it blooms early to late summer. It gets to be 10 to 12 inches in height and needs 16 inch spacing. Hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And there you go. And this salvia here looks like it might be a little bit later blooming variety. I happen to have the main night in my garden. And the May night blooms in, um, I would say, early spring, but it will continually bloom for me with regular deadheading. I will get several flushes out of it. And this one here says that it blooms early to midsummer and repeats midfall. So it's a great idea to always, um, if there is a plant that you like, to stagger different varieties that might bloom at different times. So this salvia here is called East Friesland, and it gets to be 12 to 18 inches in height, needs 12 inch spacing, water when dry, Hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a really pretty purple coloring. It looks very similar to my variety of Maynite. And here is another variety of tick seed or Coreopsis. This one is really pretty. If you have like a hot colored garden where you're having yellows and reds and oranges, this one is really pretty. And it is also a soft yellow, um, which I prefer over a brighter golden yellow. And this variety here is called the Coreopsis Uptick Cream and Red. It gets to be 12 to 14 inches in height. It needs 14 to 16 inch spacing, hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and it blooms late spring through fall. So this is a really pretty one. I have a variety of Coreopsis in my garden that is this light buttery yellow, and it is called Moonbeam, and it will bloom now in late spring all the way through fall with some deadheading. I actually hardly ever deadhead it, if I'm being honest, maybe once throughout the season, and it just blooms and blooms its head off. Really great plant.
Speaking of hot colored flowers, here's another really pretty one. And this is known as the blanket flower. Look at that. So pretty. And this one here is called blanket flower spin top. And it is a full sun perennial. It gets to be 8 to 10 inches in height. So it's a very short type perennial. It would be great for the front of a border. Needs about 15 to 18 inch spacing. And it's hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Blooms late spring through summer. And it also looks really pretty with purple. Look at that. And some Nepeta, an absolute workhorse in the garden. Pollinators love it. It has a really nice fragrance. It's part of the mint family. So it almost has like a minty scent. Also blooms for a really long time from spring through fall. Um, when it has its first flush of blooms, it's the most prolific. And then you would just follow the stems of spent blooms down, deadhead it, and it will flush out with some new blooms. Now this variety here is, let's see, this is the cat mint. Cat mint is another name for Nepeta, and it's the variety Blue Wonder. It gets to be 12 to 15 inches in height and spread of 18 inches. Now these are hardy, very hardy, down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and this variety blooms early to late summer. Now these are another plant, just like salvias and Russian sage, that prefer a very well-draining soil in full sun. Otherwise, you will start getting some flopping in the center. But really great perennial. And some bee balm, also known as Monarda. This also has a really nice fragrance. Um, and it is a great perennial for pollinators. The only thing that is sometimes an issue with bee balm is that it is prone to something called powdery mildew. And that just means that the leaves will get this kind of powdery white look to them. It doesn't harm the plant, but it does look very unsightly. So in order to avoid that, you want to give it proper airflow and um, make sure that you space it appropriately. So this variety here is called Bee Balm Balmy Pink, and it is a pretty short stature at 10 to 12 inches, although I will tell you that the one I'm looking at here looks like it's closer to um, 18 to 20 inches. So I do think that they get quite a bit taller than what it says. And hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, blooms late spring through summer. Here you can see the height on that. Now there are taller varieties of bee balm and shorter varieties. I want to say that most of them probably land somewhere in that 12 to 24 inch range. And some oriental lilies. Now these are all budded up and these buds are huge. So they are going to start blooming probably in the next couple of weeks, if not sooner. Now the oriental lilies, there are so many beautiful varieties of lilies. There's the Asiatic, which tend to be a little bit shorter, and the oriental lilies, which tend to be a little bit taller. Um, some of the oriental ones include the stargazer and they're really beautiful. Now this one here is called, oh look at that, it's a double, oriental lily rose lily sitta or Sita, and it is deer resistant. Now, I don't know about that because I do have to spray the buds on my lilies. Um, otherwise, the deer in my garden do tend to go after them. Um, they do like full sun, and this one blooms early to late summer. Gets to be 30 to 42 inches in height, and it is hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, lilies do spread in time. Um, they, they have bulbs, and they will start multiplying the bulbs, but these are a really gorgeous plant for your garden. And flocks, just like we talked about with the bee balm, flocks is another one that needs proper spacing. If you don't give it proper spacing, it's another plant that is prone to something called powdery mildew, where the leaves will start looking like they have a powdery substance. But look how beautiful this vibrant phlox is. So pretty. Now, phlox also is one that comes in multiple heights and different bloom times. So if you do like garden phlox, you can stagger the bloom times by having different varieties growing in your garden. Now, this one here is called Garden Phlox Glamour Girl, and it has a really beautiful, vibrant fuchsia pink. It gets to be 24 to 32 inches in height, so this would be like a middle of the border plant. And it is hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, blooms mid to late summer. This one looks really healthy. Nice, beautiful green foliage. Oh, and right on the side of it, this is actually the variety of Coreopsis that I have. You can see that the bloom is quite a bit smaller. It's really dainty, this really pretty light yellow. And this is the Moonbeam variety, Threadleaf Coreopsis. This one here, it gets to be 18 to 24 inches, has a nice mound with tons of blooms, and it is hardy, very hardy, down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and it blooms early summer through fall. Let's see how pretty that looks. And what a beautiful combination, this light buttery yellow with that pink from the flocks.
and a still be a beautiful perennial for part shade to shade although some of the newer varieties that are being cultivated can handle a little bit more sun now what you need to know about growing a still be is that they are heavy feeders so in late winter early spring you want to provide them with an all-purpose plant fertilizer i like to use the granular fertilizer called plant tone um, and it works really well and they also like a moist but well draining soil so as long as they have fertilizer and proper moisture they will do really well and then you will be rewarded with these beautiful fuzzy plume blooms. This variety is called Delft Lace and it gets to be 24 to 36 inches in height and hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit and it blooms early to midsummer. It also has really pretty foliage so even when it's not in bloom you get this really pretty ferny foliage. I left my bloom spikes up all season and even in the fall they take on a tan appearance and provide a lot of interest in the garden. Here's where it gets its name, Bee Balm. The bees absolutely love it. And some more beautiful phlox mixed with some daylilies. Now daylilies get their name because each bloom only lasts one day, but they always have a bunch of buds right behind to provide you more beautiful blooms. Now daylilies have a clump of green foliage that is very much um, like a grass. So even when it's not in bloom, it can take on the appearance of an ornamental grass. Now deer really do like daylilies, so you do have to protect your blooms by spraying them with a deer repellent. But look how pretty these are. This one happens to have a bit of a mauve color with a red center and a green chartreuse yellow throat. This variety is called Rainbow Rhythm Storm Shelter by Proven Winners. It is a full sun or part sun perennial. It gets to be 24 inches. Now, daylilies, there are varieties that bloom early, mid, and late season, and they also come in different heights so that you can decide where to place them in your borders. This one here is a medium height at 24 inches, and it is hardy in zones three through nine, and it blooms midsummer. That's a pretty one. And these containers are, let's see, a number three for $24.98. They also have a variety of flocks called Opening Act Ultra Pink. Really pretty. That is this vibrant phlox that you see here. Look how gorgeous that is. So pretty. And this variety of phlox is also for full sun. It gets to be 22 to 28 inches. So this would be a mid of the border, middle border type plant. And it needs 32 inch spacing. So again, phlox needs proper spacing because of powdery mildew. So I would space that appropriately. Hardy in zones four through eight or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And it blooms early summer through late summer. Does look really pretty with phlox. And since phlox comes in different colors, you could find one that coordinates with your daylily. And check out this daylily. It is ginormous. The bloom is like the size of my hand. So pretty. This one is another proven winner's daylily, and it's called Rainbow Rhythm Ruby Spider. It likes full part sun, and it's pretty tall at 34 inches in height. And it blooms, let's see, early summer. So it's an early summer bloomer, hardy in zones 3 through 9 or down to negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a real pretty one. Again, if you have a hot colored garden, this would look gorgeous. And I see a plant over to my left here that I'm going to show you that would pair really nicely with this. Now, daylilies, the foliage sometimes can look a little bit tattered after they're done blooming, but all you have to do is cut them down to the base. And then in a couple of weeks, you'll have a bunch of new foliage and they'll look fresh and new again. Look at this. Nephophia with daylilies look so pretty together. Isn't that gorgeous? Similar colors, both in that hot color family. And they both have similar texture foliage. So the Nephophia also has a grassy-like texture. So even when it's not in bloom, it looks like you have a clump of ornamental grass. This one has a ton of bloom stalks coming up here. And it has this really pretty, almost like a creamsicle color. It's just really pretty. I have one in my garden called Lucky Lady, and it's a bit of a chartreuse green, um, almost a very pale yellow. I really like it. Now, now this Nephophia is in a Home Depot brand container, so there are no specs on it, but I can tell you from memory, they like full sun and they get to be anywhere from two to three feet in height. And I'm sure some varieties get taller. It really will depend on the cultivar. Now, this one here is a number three container for $19.98. And you can see that the clump is quite large, so it can very easily be divided. And a lot of these plants have been growing in these containers in nurseries for a really long time. And they're usually screaming to get out of these planters and into the garden. So if you divide it, keep it well watered, it should do pretty well for you.
they have yet another variety of oriental lily now anytime that you see rose lily it usually means that it's this double ruffly variety and this one is called ezra reminds me of twilight that series twilight if anybody watched that it blooms early to late summer it gets to be 30 to 42 inches in height so pretty tall and it is hardy down to negative 30 degrees fahrenheit now what's great about these double varieties is a lot of times that they won't have their exposed um pollen in the center so sometimes when i walk by say even my casablanca lilies i'll get pollen on my clothes so that's another great feature not only are they beautiful these rose lilies but the pollen is also not exposed these are a number three container for $19.98. Now I'm gonna share with you a quick tip as to why it's great to always look up the variety that you're interested in buying on your phone with a quick Google search. This Rose Lily Ezra, I was about to purchase it because I thought it was a beautiful double frilly white lily. And it was loaded, loaded with buds and I was excited to add it to my garden because I really like the look of white lilies. When I looked it up, it turns out that this variety Ezra everywhere on Google looks pink. And while pink is beautiful and I have a ton of it in my garden, I wanted a lily that looked like this. So if I brought it home, I would be disappointed. So if there is something that you're looking to buy that is in full bud like this and you can't see what color it's going to be, always a good idea to take a minute to look it up. And a really sunny and cherry flower that will bloom for you all summer and through the fall. This is the Sunfinity Sunflower. These are $15.98 for this one and a half gallon. And they have these really beautiful, pretty large size sunflowers. Multi-branching, so you're going to get a ton of blooms from one plant. Look at that. This one has a couple of heads on it. So this is a really fun annual to grow. And some very new inventory that's just getting put out now. They have some drift roses. Now, this is a really beautiful one. This is a landscape shrub rose that stays pretty low. It's actually considered a ground cover. And it says drift ground cover roses made easy. So if you wanted a rose for the front of a border that stays relatively low and that is pretty low fuss, this drift rose would be a great option. This one here is called apricot drift. And it, these are $16.98 for a number one container. It likes full sun. Most roses like a full sun uh, disposition with a very well draining soil. They're hardy in zones four through 11 and they get to be one and a half high by two and a half wide. So pretty compact and not a bad price. And these one gallons are super easy to plant because they're not very large, the root ball. And they look relatively healthy with lots of buds. Really love this color. It looks like it starts off a peach and then ages this really light pale color. Friends, some of you have asked me, when are the cone flowers showing up? And here in my zone six, they have just showed up. They will appear at the nursery anywhere from mid to late June, and they will bloom for me in my garden in July. They're actually all budded up and should be blooming in the next couple of weeks, which is so exciting. This Cheyenne Spirit variety is awesome because it has multiple colors on just one plant. You will get oranges, what looks to be a really bright coral, yellows, and even creams. So it's a really good one to add if you're new at a coneflower and want one that offers a lot of interest with just one plant. So this Cheyenne Spirit is going to be in their larger house container. So it looks like a number three for $19.98, but these are really large clumps. So you will get a big impact from one of these being planted with all of these different colors that you get on one plant for $19.98. And coneflowers like full sun and well-draining soil. When it starts heating up, the prices start coming down. So the fruit, flower, and shade trees are now 50% off here at my Zone 6 store. And a beautiful spirea that I actually have in my garden as well is this one here. It's the Double Play Candy Corn Spirea by Proven Winners. Now this is considered a dwarf size spirea, getting to be only about two to three feet tall and wide. And what's great about this shrub is that it has such a large color variation. So this will start leafing out for me really um, early in the season. So late winter, very early spring, you'll start getting red foliage out of this shrub. Then after it turns red, it will go orange before going this beautiful shark chartreuse yellow color and then it will start getting a bit more yellow as it starts to put on its bloom clusters now the blooms are a beautiful fuchsia color look at that a hot pink so pretty and that usually happens somewhere in late june or early july for me they're actually just starting to bud up and bloom now and this one here is hardy in zones four through seven or down to negative 30 degrees fahrenheit they stay pretty compact at one and a half to two and a half feet tall and wide mine are about three years old and i want to say they are already at about that two and a half um 
foot range in size. And they're just really pretty. Now, something that you should know about these, even though it does say that it can take full sun, part sun, um, it needs sun to have this beautiful color variation. But I find that too much hot sun can sometimes scorch the leaves. Now, they do acclimate over time. And over time, it'll burn less as it becomes more mature. But you can also offer it a little bit more water so that you can prevent some of that from happening. But a really great dwarf spirea for your garden with such beautiful coloring. And this spirea is a number two container for $29.98. And they have a ton of bobo hydrangeas. I actually have these in my garden and I really love them. They are a panicle type hydrangea, which panicle type hydrangeas can take a little bit more sun. And these like full to part sun. Now I will say that because hydrangeas, hydra, they like water. If you're having a drought or a season where you're not getting a lot of rain, you do want to make sure you supplement the water because sometimes the blooms can go a little bit brown if it is too hot and sunny and they're not getting enough water. That is what I have found with the bobos I have in my garden. But last year we had lots of rain and the blooms were spectacular. So here it is. The bobo is a panicle hydrangea. It is more compact, staying only at about two and a half to three feet tall and wide. I would say probably that three to four tall and wide is a bit more accurate. And you can always size control these by pruning them in late winter. They need full to part sun and they are hardy in zones three through eight or down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And look at those blooms there. They start off a creamy white and then as the temperatures cool off in the evening, they will start to age to a really pretty shade of rose pink. And these bobos here are in a number three container for $36.98. And the quick fire, another really beautiful panicle type hydrangea. This one has already started to bloom. And let's take a look at the specs on the quick fire. So this one here, again, can take some sun. This is the quick fire fab. So it has been bred um, to be improved over the original quick fire. Now this one here will have stronger, sturdier stems, and it also blooms earlier than the regular quick fire, which I happen to have the quick fire in my garden and it is gorgeous. But this one, the blooms are a little bit more, um, they have more blooms on them as well, more flowers. They're more floriferous, is that what you would say? Um, so very full panicle blooms. So this one here gets to be six to eight feet tall and five to six feet wide. And it is hardy in USDA growing zones three through eight or down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And it likes part to full sun. Look at that gorgeous red coloring. It's like a deep pink, almost red. And you'll get this color again as the season progresses. They'll go from white to pink to finally this color. Um, and that usually happens in zones that get cooler evenings. So if you are in the south or in a spot where you don't get cooler evenings, um, you might not get the color changes on some of your shrubs. I know that is true with the limelight hydrangeas because I've talked about that in the past and that is some of the feedback that I have received. And check out these gorgeous pink hydrangeas. Now these are macrophylla type hydrangeas and these are the ones that you would plant in shade or part shade and they still bloom beautifully for you. They're also known as the big leaf or the mop head type hydrangeas. Now for most cases with these types of hydrangeas, the color of the blooms will depend on the pH in your soil. So if you have more acidic soil, they will lean more blue and if you have more alkaline soil, they will be more purple pink. Now this is by the Endless Summer brand and these are their uh, Summer Crush and it is a reblooming hydrangea. So the first flush you'll get more blooms and then you will get secondary blooming throughout the season on this shrub which is wonderful. Now these are pretty compact too with the size being only 18 to 36 inches tall and wide. They are hardy in zones 4 through 9 and they like morning sun afternoon shade. And they have a round um, upright growth habit so pretty and these are a number three container for $34.98. Here's another really beautiful hydrangea. This is another big leaf hydrangea in this beautiful light pink coloring and this is the proven winners Let's Dance Can Do and the Let's Dance Can Do is a big leaf reblooming hydrangea. Oh I love reblooming. Anything that you can get more blooms out of is wonderful and it is hardy in zones four through nine or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It needs part to full sun and which is great that this one can even handle more sun and it gets to be three to four feet tall and three feet wide and it blooms in summer through fall because it's reblooming you'll get those um, blooms coming throughout the rest of the season and these here are a number two container for 29.98 
And I just have to show this smoke bush because I have one in my garden and it's looking glorious at the moment. It is getting ready to bloom and their blooms have these like puffs. They almost look like cotton candy. And then it has this really pretty red foliage. The new foliage is brighter. I would say that it's a bit redder when it first emerges and then it still takes on this dark tone. So if you're looking to add some color variation to your garden, the smoke bush is a great shrub. Now these can be either a really large shrub or you can limb it up and train it into a small tree. But I absolutely love mine. Here's the information on the tag. It actually does say smoke tree royal purple. So it will grow kind of in a multi trunk type tree. Uh, it is deer resistant. I could say that the deer do not touch it. And I do have it in a spot that they frequently walk by. And it gets to be eight to 10 feet in height. It is drought tolerant. And anytime you see drought tolerant, that's usually once they're established. When you newly plant it, you do have to keep after watering it. Usually about one season in, they tend to be more established. And it blooms early to late summer. And it gets it needs 10 to 12 foot space hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit and this here is let's see it's in the Home Depot house container and it is a number three for $29.98 now, smoke bushes also come in a golden color. You can see here, this one is by Proven Winners, and it is the Winecraft Gold. And look how beautiful this color of this foliage is. It's a really pretty, bright, golden chartreuse color. It also blooms, so we'll still get those puffs of blooms. This one is a bit more upright in growth habit, I believe. You can see here in the spec card, the photo, how it grows. And it's a really pretty one. That's what the blooms look like. They have like a white coloring to them. And let's see the size is four to six feet tall and four feet wide. So nice and compact. If the royal purple smoke bush gets quite a bit larger. So if you want to add a smoke bush, this beautiful gold color, it would be really nice addition. And the size is pretty compact. Hardy and zones five through eight are down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And it likes sun and part shade. And these are a number three for $36.98. And since we are heading into hydrangea season, I'm going to show you one more beauty. And this one is another panicle type hydrangea that is loaded with buds. Look at that. And this is the strawberry sundae. And this is a proven, no, it's not. It's a first editions shrub. And let's see, the strawberry sundae hydrangea is a paniculata type and it likes full sun to part shade and it has medium water needs. It gets to be four to five feet in height and three to four feet in width. Hardy in zones three through eight. And these are $36.98 for a number three container. So the hydrangea prices seem to have gone up a little bit. I've been doing these videos for a couple of years and they used to top out at around $29.98 and now they're upwards of $36. Um, they will last you a really long time. Once you add these to your garden, keep them happy with watering and proper light conditions, and you will enjoy them for years to come. While there were lots of deciduous shrubs, there aren't any new evergreens or anything interesting anyhow. So some of these are the same that I showed you in my last Home Depot video, but they still have lots of selection available. Now it is starting to get a little hot to plant some of these evergreens. Um, they prefer cooler temperatures, so it's usually best to plant your evergreens in spring and in fall. So I'm certain that they will get another shipment in time for fall planting. And here's an interesting Wygela with some variegated foliage. So even when it's not in bloom, you get a lot of interest with the variegation on the foliage here. You get a darker green with a lighter green along the outer margins. And this is called, so let's see, Wygela French Lace. And it likes full sun. It is deer resistant. It gets to be four to six feet in height and needs 36 to 48 inch spacing. Hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It does have really pretty foliage. I suppose it's also known as Wygela Florida, and a number three is $24.98. And here is another Wygela with a dark foliage, and you can see how beautiful this dark foliage looks among all of the green that we have in our gardens. It really provides some contrast and just looks really pretty. So I have a dark foliage Wygela similar to this in my garden. It is the Proven Winners Wine and Roses, and it gets anywhere from four to five feet tall, um, and it gets these 
pink, hot pink trumpet shaped blooms that actually just finished blooming and the hummingbirds love it. But now you can get a variety with dark foliage like this in a dwarf, more compact size. Now they have the spilled wine, which is very similar to the wine and roses. But this one here is a newer variety called Midnight Wine, a dwarf Wygela. It's an award winner. And this one here is Itty Bitty. Look at this. It only gets to be one foot tall and one foot wide. So whether you have a small garden or a large garden, you can find a place to tuck this in your garden. Now this would look great along the front of a a border or a bed and look how beautiful it looks with some golden colored flowers like tick seed or coreopsis and even like a black eyed susan really pretty so the midnight wine wygela likes sun it is hardy in zones five through eight or down to negative 20 degrees fahrenheit and one by one in size and it blooms late spring and these here are a number two container for $29.98. And some butterfly bushes. Now butterfly bushes can get quite large, but this variety here by Proven Winners is the Pugster and it is pretty compact. Now one thing about butterfly bushes is that you do need to grow them in full sun and in a well-draining soil. I actually lost a couple of my Pugsters because they were planted in a bed that stays too moist. So this one here, the Pugster Blue, has a really pretty blue coloring. Now the other thing about this that is really cool is that I think these smell like lilacs. They have a really nice fragrance and they bloom for such a long time. So the Pugster Blue is let's see a shrub that is hardy in zones five through nine or down to negative 20 degrees fahrenheit it likes sun well draining soil and it gets to be two feet tall by two feet wide now these emerge really late in the spring so you'll start to see them leaf out i would say mid to late spring and then they will start blooming but then the blooms don't stop until you get your first hard frost and to keep it blooming and to keep it producing more bloom buds you want to just deadhead or take off any of the spent blooms so once they're done clip them off and it will keep producing for you and this Budlia, the Pugster Blue, is a number two container for $29.98. And some ornamental onions, also known as alliums. Now, alliums are a beautiful globe-shaped flower, and there are two varieties. There are some that you would plant a bulb in the fall, and they will bloom for you in the spring. And then there is this perennial type that comes in a clump that you will plant, and they will bloom for you in the summer. They will give you this little round, ball-shaped bloom of purple. They come in different shades of purple, some even in light pink, and there might even be white. They are beautiful. And because they're part of the onion family, critters don't bother it. So the deer don't bother it, the rabbits don't bother it. So a really great perennial. So here you can see, this is what the blooms will look like. It's hard to tell in this picture, but trust me, they're really great. Um, $19.98 for this number three container. They get to be 12 to 15 inches in height and water when dry, hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And this variety millennium blooms mid to late summer. And when, even when they're not in bloom, you look like you have a little clump of ornamental grass. And here is another ornamental onion or allium. And this is by Proven Winners. The variety is called Serendipity. And you can see those beautiful blooms there. That is what they look like. The little round purple blooms. They almost look like drumsticks, right? And they like full apart sun. They get to be 15 to 20 inches in height. Now these are super easy to divide. I actually did that when I purchased mine. I divided them in three clumps right off the bat. And they did wonderfully. These here need um, a minimum of a 10 inch spacing. They're hardy in zones four through eight or down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And they bloom mid to late summer. And these are a number three container for $24.98. Well, that brings us to the end of the late June inventory here at the Home Depot. I hope that you've enjoyed checking out what my store has in stock. And I hope that you can find some of these varieties near you. Thank you for spending your time with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.